Hi, I'm Adam Drake from Mugen Siki Racing. Today I'm going to talk about rear camber link positions, mainly the rear inner camber link height, as well as rear roll center. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible, just to give you a general idea of what the rear camber link positions do when you move up and down. Now, this kind of like with most changes, um, it's not as simple as just a roll center adjustment. It also changes the amount of camber rise. And by that, I mean, as the vehicle goes through its suspension travel, more camber rise means there'll be more change in camber. So basically if you're at full extension, you could possibly have zero or even a little bit of positive camber. And then as you compress it, you gain negative camber. So we'll start by explaining when you raise the inner camber link. And when you raise the inner camber link, you will have uh, less camber gain. So the tire will stay more consistent or more upright throughout its travel. And it will also lower the roll center. And when you raise this inner link, it will actually generate more roll. Um, it will kind of help round corners and will usually help generate grip. So even though it rolls more though, the response um, or the roll will be a little bit slower. It won't be uh, quite as fast or agile. But again, this will give you more grip and if you lower the inner link, this will give you more camber eyes or more change in camber from full extension to full compression. And this also uh, raises the roll center. So this'll, this will drive a little bit flatter. When it does roll, it will want to roll a little bit quicker, but in general, it will roll less and this is usually good for higher grip tracks. So at Nitro Challenge where it's usually pretty high speed and kind of has some uh, sharp bumps, we normally will run the inner rear link down and the camber rise will help uh, so that it doesn't want to grab bumps, but it'll also um, allow the car to drive flat and carry a lot of speed through the turn and also be a little bit more responsive. So this can be different though with different vehicles. So, you know, you need to try this for yourself if you're not using a Mugen vehicle, but this is just kind of a general rule of thumb for all the Mugen off-road vehicles. So another thing I want to touch on with the rear camera links is the rear camera link position, whether you move the camera link position in or out or short versus long links. Normally we like to run the longest rear link and then we just adjust the inner camber link height. But if you want the vehicle to be more responsive and have a little bit more steering, sometimes we'll shorten the rear link on the hub carrier by going to the middle position. And there's even some setups that we've had where we shorten it on the inside and on the outside. And that shorter link will just give the car uh, more support or drive a lot flatter, but it will also roll faster. So it won't roll as deep into the roll, but it will roll a little bit faster. Now, if you are running a shorter link, if you move that link out, so keep the exact same length and just shift it out, that usually is better on higher grip tracks and will be a little bit more stable than if that link is shifted in. And if you take that link and shift it in, it'll be a little bit more responsive, drive a little bit more square, not want to round the turn quite as much and be better on lower grip conditions. But again, for most tracks with the Mugen vehicles, we prefer to run the long inner position and then also the position that is long um, or deeper into the wheel. That tends to be the most stable, 
consistent from track to track and easiest to drive.